Hello, I'm Sharon Slater and welcome to Rediscovering Limerick. Today we're going to bring you some interesting facts about how Limerick changed the world. The blueprint of Manhattan is famed all over the world, but what is not as well known is that Limerick did it first. Limerick City in the Newtown Perry area, from Rutland Street to O'Connell Avenue, was a planned city with each street designed and laid out in a gridwork pattern. The families behind this scheme were the Arthurs and the Sexton Perrys. These men had the foresight to see that the marshland, known in the 18th century as the Mardike, had great potential. The first buildings that were erected in the new city were by the Custom House. These were named after members of the Arthur family, Patrick Street and Francis Street and Arthur's Key. With projects like this, as well as many others, Limerick in the 18th century was a centre for innovation and development. It attracted visitors from far and wide. You can see the grid pattern very clearly along O'Connell Street and down Rocha Street. You can see the streets are broken up into individual blocks, just like they are in Manhattan. There is little doubt that the planners of Manhattan in 1807 were influenced by the scheme piloted in Limerick in 1765. Henry Ford of Ford Cars was known all around the world for his assembly lines. But did you know that the assembly lines were first started in Limerick? In 1863, Peter Tate of the Limerick Clothing Factory received an order from the Confederate Army for over 50,000 items of clothing, which included great coats and caps. At the time, the production of clothing was done by one individual. One person would make an entire jacket. But Peter Tate pioneered the idea of an assembly line where he would have one person manufacturing all the collars while another manufactured all the cups. This would speed up the production of each jacket tenfold. Here we are on Lord Edward Street at what remains of the Limerick Clothing Factory. This building was created as Peter Tate needed somewhere to house his assembly line. Thousands of people would have walked through this door as the Limerick Clothing Factory was one of the largest employers in Limerick. The garments that were produced here would have been sent throughout the world. Peter Tate arrived in Limerick as a teenager with only a handful of change in his pocket. He worked his way up from an apprenticeship to becoming three times mayor of the city. In his later years, Peter Tate would fall into obscurity and despite all his ingenuity, he would leave Limerick and would die with only a few pounds to his name. Many of us have read the novels of Jane Austen, but did you know that the cad in many of her books was influenced by her real life love affair with Limerick man, Thomas Lefroy? This is 108 O'Connell Street, or as it was once known, Georgia Street. This is where Thomas Lefroy was born in 1776, a mere 12 years after work began on the Newtown Perry area, which made this one of the most prestigious addresses in Limerick City at the time. Like the protagonist in Jane Austen's books, Thomas Lefroy was also secretly married. In 1796, Jane Austen would write to her sister, stating, at length the day has come where I am to flirt my last with Tom Lefroy. When you receive this, it will be over. My tears flow as I write the melancholy idea. The production of pork, bacon and ham products have been intertwined with Limerick's history since the early 19th century. But did you know Limerick is the reason why ham is a traditional dish on the Christmas table? The four main pork product manufacturers in the city were O'Mara's, Matterson's, Shaw's and later Denny's. Each of these had their own large factories and stores within the city, though there were countless other smaller factories too. Most of the bacon factories were in the Summer Street to Roaches Street area. Throughout these streets and the lanes, the sounds of the pigs squealing and the smells associated with the factories were an integral part of the city's atmosphere. We are here on Roaches Street, where the remnants of the warehouses and factories can still be seen. On Roaches Street, O'Mara's and Matterson's had their bacon factories. It is interesting that two rival companies would house their factories on the same street. 
This building here was once where Omaris Bacon Factory stood. This laneway was much like many others inside in the city. And as you can see from the warehouse beside, this is similar to what would have stood on this side of the street. This warehouse was similar to many others inside in the city, including the bacon factories themselves. It would have a high door for products to be brought in and out. The way to access this door was by a horse pulling a rope attached to the products. The horse would walk the length of the laneway, pulling the rope, hoisting the products higher and higher until they could be brought into the building itself. The influence of the pig can still be seen in Limerick's landscape today with buildings such as this and also in Augustine Lane. In the mid-19th century, the Limerick bacon factories were renowned all over the world and they were a tourist attraction in themselves. In 1859, Samuel Reynolds Hull, on visiting Limerick, remarked how he didn't get to see the bacon factories but that there were over one million pigs slaughtered annually in the city. These factories would export their products all over the world and they would even wind up on the table of Queen Victoria, who would insist that a Limerick ham would grace her table every Christmas. The actions of Queen Victoria were reported in the newspapers far and wide and so everyone wanted a Limerick ham on their Christmas table. This soon became a tradition that is still held today. Remember to check out my website, limerickslife.com, to discover things that have happened in Limerick's past. And also to check out iloplimerick.com to find out what's happening in Limerick today.